Hello YouTube family. This is your friend Pastor Riz. You're welcome. If it's your first time here, kindly consider subscribing to my channel and God bless you. So you are welcome and today I bless the Lord for giving me another opportunity to share the word of God. This platform is all about propagating the gospel. So let's share as much as we can. Press that bell button and let this video reach to many people and let us preach the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. So uh, today I want to delve into a very sensitive issue, a statement that has been issued and most times has, re has received a backlash from believers. Oh yes, believers have really fought against this statement and today I am taking bold step to discuss it because I believe it is the will of God for us to come to a place of knowledge of who we are in Christ, not because of ourselves, but because of what Christ has done for us. Salvation is not salvation if there is no grace, if there is no power of God, is if it's not what God has done. It's not about what we have done. It's about what God has done for us. It's about the pay, the payment that Jesus Christ has paid on the cross. We are who we are because we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light through salvation. We have been put into a kingdom, into a place where we did not buy it we did not we did not qualify for it we were qualified through the blood of jesus christ so it is not by might it is not by power it is by the spirit of the living god now this statement is once born again forever born again yes the ministers of grace have said once born again forever born again is it true and if it's true, then how comes that a believer will miss heaven? How can a believer miss heaven while he's born again and forever born again? Now, let's go to the word of God. Amen. Get your pen and paper and let's get ready to study. Now, the Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When you receive Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. Praise the name of the living God. In the previous videos, if you kindly go back on, if you have not watched them and watch them and learn, we have talked about the Trinity of man. We talked about the spirit. We talked about the soul and the body and when we discussed these things we we talked about who when we receive jesus christ when we say that we are born again then what is involved in being born again so when you get born again it is your spirit man that is born again because he was dead because of sin but now he comes to life he is born again but your soul your soul man is not born again but your soul man goes through a process called transformation because the soul involves your mind your will and your emotions so when you get born again you don't lose those emotions right away you don't lose the urge to have that drink right away you don't lose that urge of fornication right away no it's not a transformation right there and then but you go through a season of transformation but when it comes to the spirit man your spirit man is born again he is he becomes a dwelling place of the spirit of god it becomes a dwelling place of the power of god of the righteousness of god now the spirit man carries the power of God or carries the entirety of the light of God. That's why the Bible says that we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Praise the name of the living God. I want you to be delivered from every spirit of condemnation. Why? Because the devil will want us to be sin conscious. That is the plan of the enemy. The enemy wants you to be sin conscious 
other instead of you being righteous conscious or you being God conscious. Why? Because when all the time you tell yourself you're a sinner, I am a sinner, I have fallen, I can't make it, I am weak. That's what you become because the Bible says what? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So every time the enemy preaches about to you about your failures. He preaches to you about the sins that you have committed and he wants to show you that you are not righteous. When you see yourself you are not righteous, you condemn yourself. You don't have that confidence to go before God. You don't even have confidence to, to address issues in life. You don't have confidence of who God says you are. Why? Because the devil has made you to be sin conscious instead of being righteous conscious. Praise God. Know what uh, child of God, that when you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the light of God. The Bible says that in John 3, 6, that that which is born of God, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now your spirit man is born of the spirit. And that which is born of God overcometh the world. Therefore, it means what? That your spirit spirit man cannot be destroyed. Your spirit man has overcome the world because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. When God, oh my Jesus, when Jesus Christ gave his life for you, the Bible says that we have died together with him in baptism and resurrected together with him. Now how comes that which God has resurrected then has to die again? No, 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 no. It is the lie of the devil. It is religious humility that is destroying the power in the house of God. Praise the name of the living God. May God deliver us from religious humility. Now, you refuse that the totality of what God has done for you on the cross because you want to receive the totality of calling yourself unrighteous. The Bible says that we are the righteousness of God. Not because of what you do, but because of what Christ has already attained for us. We have not yet attained. Day by day, we are we are moving forward, being transformed and every time as the light of the world comes in our lives, we are transformed to be like Jesus Christ. Then when we behold him, we shall know that we have seen him. Hallelujah. That when we do the Bible says that, that when we see him, we shall know him. How shall we know him? Because we shall be a look alike. Why? Because we shall be transformed. Day by day we are transformed. At that time we shall be transformed to look like him. And this is a transformation period and a transformation season in Jesus' mighty name. Now, when a man is born of God, when you are born again, you are born of the spirit of God. Your spirit man does not go through destruction. Your spirit man does not sin. It is your soulish realm that is involved with sin because it is the place of your emotions, the place of, of um the mind, the thinking, and the will, those emotions are the one that pushes man to sin. But your spirit man, the place of communion, the place of revelation, the place of power, the place of authority, that spirit man which is born of God cannot be destroyed. That's why, child of God, you are the righteousness of God. You are empowered to walk in authority and power. The enemy desires to put you in a place of condemnation that every time you will condemn yourself. But let me tell you, when you are conscious of the righteousness of God that God has given you, even when you have not attained to that level that which you feel now, that you have things in your life that you're going through you maybe you're going through a season you're falling into fornication all the time you're falling into adultery all the time maybe you're into masturbation oh let me tell you you can be delivered you can be transformed but where is this transformation going to come from it is from the place of understanding that 
God, you are in Christ and Christ in you. And you've been given the power to overcome the enemy. When you have that authority, when you have that confidence in Christ that he has paid your debt, then you are able to arise and fight together because God has already fought these battles for you in Jesus mighty name. The enemy wants to manipulate you but it's a high time that we arise and come out of this manipulation of the enemy that wants to put us in a place of bondage once born again forever born again of your spirit man. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says in John 3:36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, not will have. So your spirit man has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. So whoever does not believe in Christ does not see life. In fact, he has no life. He's in dead. He's dead in sin. But the wrath of God abideth in him. The wrath of God abideth in that man that has not believed in his son Jesus Christ. Wrath is not, the wrath of God is not upon you. Maybe you are in a season whereby you're feeling filthy. You're feeling you have done so many sins and now that you're not worthy. Let me tell you, you're not worthy before God because of your actions. You're worthy before God because of the blood of Jesus. That's why every time when you go up to God in prayer, this is how we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the name of Jesus is the covering that we are under. It is the name above every other name. It is the blood of Jesus that has washed us and cleansed us. It is the blood of Jesus that the Father sees when he looks upon him. We don't appear to him in our name. We don't appear to him in our own standards. We appear before God in his own standard, in the standard of the name of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says that and this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we ask anything in the name of the Lord, he shall give unto us. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth in him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Oh, hallelujah. Whoever has believed him, he has Pass from death to life. Have you received him? Have you believed him? You have passed from the place of condemnation. You have passed from the place of death. And you have entered into the place of everlasting life. It doesn't matter the kind of things that you have not been able to overcome. Every stronghold in your life will come falling down. When you understand your identity in Christ Jesus. It is not about who men call you. It's not about the system calling you. It's about who God calls you. It's about what his word has said about you. Whose report have you believed? I will believe the report of the law. The report of the law says, I am forgiven. The report of the law says, I am the righteousness of God. The report of the law says, I have passed from death to life. The report of the Lord says, I am a chosen generation, a people of God. Call for to manifest the glory of God. How can you manifest the glory of God when you are walking in condemnation? We are no longer a slave to fear. We are no longer a slave to sin. We are free. We are walking in liberty because the Bible says where the spirit of God is, there is liberty in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 6, 51, I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Have you eaten of this bread of life? You have everlasting life. Have you eaten this bread of life? You will live forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now it is a matter of understanding what God has made you to be. The trinity of man. When you understand which faculty, what is involved 
involved in what? What 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 realm is operating in your life? The, your spiritual realm, your soulish realm. And I said the body is a servant. It will always obey either of these realms. Now, the question is, you will ask me, if we was born again, forever born again, how comes that some will miss heaven and yet they are believers? Yes, they are believers who will miss heaven. And why will they miss heaven? Praise the name of the living God. Bible says, uh, the Bible says in Romans 6, verse number 1, if you read the whole of it, but I will not be able to read all of it, the Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound because we are saved by grace now sh shall we cons because this was an issue even back then the, the bible says in romans that what shall we say shall we say about these things then shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin we are dead to sin the spirit man is dead to sin. The spirit man does not sin. He is alive in God. The Holy Spirit dwells in there. He cannot sin. He is dead to sin. Now he says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now there is a there is a place of sin. Now, there is a spirit man. Now, he asks, how shall we continue to live in the place of sin? Why? Because the soul has a sinful nature. Now, we have to put the soul in a place of transformation so that we attain to the full stature of a righteous man. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in First Peter, first uh, chapter number one, verse number 22, 23, seeing you have been, you have purified your souls in obeying, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and to unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now, for one to be able to enter into everlasting life, the Bible says, seeing that you purify your souls. Why? Because the souls have not been born again. The souls have not received the spirit of God. The soul is going through transformation. Praise the name of the living God. That's why the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter number 18, that the soul that sinneth shall die. It is the soul that sinneth that shall die, not the spirit that seen it praise the name of the living god matthew 22 verse number 37 jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy god with all thy soul and with all thy mind see here jesus did not say love the lord with your spirit no he says love the lord with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul why because the soul is the one that is fighting it is the flesh and the spirit and the flesh will always be at war whether you are born again or not your soul man will because he is the flesh he will keep fighting the spirit but when you grow in the spirit you become transformed and therefore your soul and your spirit come conjoined the Therefore, the soul starts obeying the spirit of God when it is under the word of God. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, Know ye, that, uh, okay, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with materials, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, 
shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this is the place where a believer will miss heaven. Why? Because now you are born again. Your spirit man does not sin. He is pure. He is perfect. But these things are in your soulish realm. It is this, it, these sins are in the soul realm. Now, being drunk, being, being an extortionist, being a, an idolater, being a fornicator, praise the name of the living God. Now, these are the things that you need to be transformed from. So when we say that once born again, forever born again, it is not a statement to make you to put down your guard now and walk Walk in a sinful nature, believing that you will inherit the kingdom of God just because Jesus Christ died for you and once born again, forever born again. No, what the intention of God is to make you to be conscious of the righteousness of God is to be able to make you conscious of what God has already done for you, of who you are in Christ, so that you are empowered to be able to be able to be transformed. How will you be transformed? Transformed when you are in condemnation, when you have been con you have condemned yourself, and the people around you have condemned you because why we are walking in religious humility. You want to say, Oh, I am a sinner, I have sinned, I have fallen. Oh, yes, but you are not that, you are the righteousness of God. Dust yourself, arise, know that you are empowered, take the power of God, take the full armor of God, and fight this battle and overcome these spirits because it is possible to overcome them and walk in holiness. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 7, 21, not every, uh, Jesus says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Praise God. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? In thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, it is ye that work iniquity. It is not ye that call me lord lord no it is ye that work iniquity praise the name of the living god many what prophets they are prophets who will miss heaven they are preachers who will miss heaven they are believers who will miss heaven they called lord lord in fact the bible is saying what we prophesied in your name we did miracles in your name we healed men in your name yes they were doing these miracles in the name of the lord but in their souls in their life they walked in the flesh they they were idolaters. They were men of God prophesying, going and doing prophecy. After the ministry, they take the praise and worship girls and take them in their rooms. They are ministers of the gospel who are going and sleeping around with the praise and worship team, receiving around with the women in church. They are doing all things. They are believers who are extortionists. They have worked in all these things. They are giving tithes. They are giving their offerings, but they are walking in the flesh. Oh my God. It is my prayer that we may embrace the totality of our identity in Christ and be able to be righteous conscious so that we are able to overcome the power of the flesh in Jesus mighty name the Bible says in Philippians chapter number 2 verse 12 wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling this is Paul writing to Philippians and he's telling them brethren now I'm not together with you but you have always done well you have always obeyed the word of God in my presence but now more so that I'm not together with you work out your salvation which salvation are you working out you are not working out the salvation of your spirit because your spirit is born of God. You are working out the salvation of your soul. Praise the name of the living God. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Hallelujah. 
Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, I therefore run, this is Paul saying, we know Paul worked with miracles, signs and wonders, and he says in verse 26 and 27, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so f I, uh, and so fight I, not as one that beat at the air. The Bible says, but I keep my body, I keep my body and bring it into subjection. I bring my body, I bring my flesh into subjection, lest by any means, oh hallelujah, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. If Paul is saying he, he is bringing down, he is keeping his body and bringing it under subjection, lest he may miss heaven, that after preaching to many, he may miss heaven. I pray for you and I pray for myself that after preaching the word of God, that after declaring the word of God, that I may, that many will enter the kingdom of God, that you be delivered, that to get the wisdom and understanding of the the word of God and see heaven lest I should lose it. I pray, I pray like Paul that I put my body down. I put it under the subjection of the Holy Spirit that every day I desire to be transformed. Every day to be transformed to look more than Christ. To look like Christ. That when he shall be manifested, I shall look like him. That is my desire. You ask woman of God, if you're saying the spirit man is perfect, then will the spirit man enter heaven and the soul man go to hell? Oh, no. Now, when you understand the Trinity of God, that we say he's uh, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But these are one. You too, as a believer, you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And this is one. The Bible says that we shall be transformed and this body, we shall be given a new body. Therefore, you shall receive a new body. And you have in the spirit of God that is incorruptible. And you have the soul. They shall be together one. So when you shall be judged according to the things and according to the measure of God as a judge, when you shall be found wanting, you are one. You shall not be separated, soul, body, and spirit. No, you are one. You are not separated. So it is my desire that we come to the knowledge of the word of God, that we walk as the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God. We carry the glory of God. We carry the power of God. This is the season that God says, I am going to write my word in the tablets of the heart, that they shall not be asking one of the neighbor. They shall, you shall not need your neighbor to preach unto you, but his words shall be written in the tablets of your heart, that you shall not miss the way in the name of Jesus Christ. It's my desire that you become conscious of what God has done for you. You become conscious of the realities of the kingdom of God. You become conscious of the realities of the abilities and that which God or Christ has laid in for you. He has captured it for you, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That addiction that is holding you down, it is going to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit that is following after you to bring you down shall be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Once you embrace the totality of the power of God over your life, when you embrace the totality of the salvation of God over your life, when you embrace who you are in Christ Jesus, when you embrace the finished work of the cross and know that it is not by might, not by power, God will enable you to come out from that addiction. God will enable you to come from that sin that befalleth you all the time. You will fall into that sin. You rise up and you say, I will not do it again. I promise myself I will not do it again. But the more you want to live it, the more you, the, when the, more the devil condemns you, the more easily you overcome.
The time you will start forgiving yourself just like God has forgiven you and embrace the righteousness of God and start being transformed by his word, you shall find yourself that you are more than overcomer because the one who is in you is greater than who is in the world in the name of Jesus. It is my desire that we walk in righteousness and in holiness and embrace the totality of the word of God. Praise the name of the living God. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you good. I don't want to take much time, but I pray that you join me next time as I upload the next video and let us continue to understand and to get the knowledge of the word of God. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. Amen.